best care. Sandra, good to see you again. Feels like I just saw you. <laughs> <laughs> or not, or not. <laughs> you just You were just here. Good morning, Jennifer. I can't wait to hear your uh, real teams next week interview. So it's on my calendar. I was like, ooh, get to hear Jennifer share her story. I'm excited for this. So that's going to be good. Yeah. It's not fair. First of all, I look just like this with no eyebrows, right? I'm meeting with <laughs> him and I'm told I'm just meeting with him to talk. He likes it. And then he's like, you know what? I love that. Can we just do that again and record it? So I'm like, no. Do you, do you see this? <laughs> Uh, don't worry it's not gonna be played over and over again you know so. oh I don't care <laughs> <laughs> it's all good you're, you're showing up and being transparent it's good it's good so ah uh, too funny so I just did the first slam live so we had people from all over the place it was pretty cool pretty fun so Sandra was in there and Roberta and Monica and Janae so that was good thank you guys for being there and uh we went with a basketball theme and I was pretty amazing the names everyone came up with because I thought people would just be like, yeah, I'm going to be the Mavericks or the Suns or whatever. Oh, no, then we came up with like really, really creative names. So it was super fun. So <laughs> good. Sarah, name. can I just ask, is this class an hour and a half long or an hour? No, no, we're only here till for an hour. So, OK, thank you. it's going to be self-paced. So those of you who are in the SLAM, uh, the SLAM, or not SLAM, GAS program, I would encourage you to use your journals. Um, that's going to be my focus right now for the next hour is just filling out section one that um, I want to get done for my goals. Um, if I sent out the rest of you, I sent out yesterday the um, two different versions of business plans. So you have the momentum and the workman. And as I said in my email, I like the budget from momentum better because it really goes deep with things that we actually spend money on and makes you think about like, where are you spending your money? <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> makes us think about where we're spending our money. Uh, but I like the strategic plan and the SWOT that's inside of the Workman one. The Workman is a, is a fillable PDF as well. The only thing I will uh, tell you is you got to make sure you save it often because sometimes that PDF can be a little bit wonky. So, um, but like I said, those of you who are in the gas program, let's use your journals and fill out those sections because I'm sure that not everyone's filled that out because those are some pretty heavy questions, right? So we've got who is in the guest program. So we got Bob, Jennifer, Sandra, Debbie, Jan, Monica, Roberta, Randy, and myself. Okay. Okay. Um, so let's just real quick, like, give me some thoughts. Like, what are you guys thinking about what's going on right now in the market? And uh, why are you here today? Well, I, I'm here, you know, irrespective of the market, we have to learn how to, to survive the market, but I want to have a good plan for 2023 that I can hold myself accountable to. And I mean, it started already, but like, especially for 2023. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, I kind of threw out a, a, a passive goal at the beginning of the year, just kind of verbally to myself. And it's kind of funny. I was looking at my, my commissions and added up. I was like, huh. Well, look at that, right? And I didn't even write it down. It was just something of thought I had that rattled around in my head. And, you know, here we are. So uh, and I'm, I'm, if everything goes well, fingers crossed, it, I should surpass what I said I wanted to make in real estate income this year. So kind of cool, right? So there's a lot of power to having those those plans, right? Having that vision and then putting it down on paper um, because then things start to conspire, right? Opportunities start showing up that that make those things come true. And it's even more powerful if you look on it on a daily, weekly, monthly basis, right? So we're paying attention and then checking those things off as they actually happen. And when we set five-year or even 10-year goals, it's amazing how time starts to move really quickly and we're able to accomplish those things sooner than the five or 10 years, okay? Um, so what else? Let's hear from anybody else here. Roberta, we got Lynette and Jan and Deb. Um, nobody Sorry, what was our question? Just any thoughts you have about business planning right now? Nobody else going to talk. I think it's really important. I think you have to have it so that you can keep on track and you can refer back to it. Um, mm -hmm. Because especially when we shift in a market like this, you know, we're go, 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 go. And we don't really think to look at the business plan because we're just succeeding. And now we need to go back and look and say, okay, what, where are we? What are we doing? And how do we get there? How did we think about this a year ago or two, even two years ago or your five-year plan, you know, mm -hmm. where am I? 
Yeah, absolutely. And also in the workman one is the mission, the mission statement and your, your core values. So if you don't have a mission statement, and you know, a lot of times we think about that just being for teams, but I don't, I think it's for all of us. We have to have a mission statement that becomes kind of our, our rally cry, right? And when, when, the, when you get handed a, a crap sandwich or no one shows up at an open house or a deal falls apart, that we have to have that strong core value and strong mission so that we can push through that. Um, so with that being said, um, you guys, we're just going to sit here on Zoom and work on our business plans. I know it might sound a little weird, but uh, I'm going to put on some music and just whichever business plans you guys are going to use, uh, you know, let's, if you have any questions on the actual document, I emailed that all out to you guys. So did everybody get that? The two business plans? Everybody, yes, yes, yes. Okay, cool. I'm um, not sure. You're not sure if you got it? It would have been late in the day yesterday, Chris, like three, four o'clock I sent it out. Okay. It was right. an attachment to the email. You need to maybe clarify that. Oh yeah. Sorry, Randy. Yeah. It was an attachment. Oh, I understand. Yeah. I'm just trying helping. Trying yeah. to. So Sarah, in the workbook then, is it is it the first two sections, like step one and step two or whatever? You're talking about the journal. So yeah. Yeah. The journal. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So whatever you want to fill out on that, I want to fill out the first section. That's just my personal objective for today, or at least get most of it done today. Cause those questions are hard, right? They're not easy questions. So they, that's why you know, we want to have this time where you can really sit down and say, and be concentrated on what, what are the, what are the things I want to accomplish in my life? Yeah, I've done most of it, but I just go back and add stuff to it and, and whatever. Yeah. Okay. Well then move on to the next section, create your top 50 or your budget or whatever you want to work on today. Okay. Okay. All right. Very good. Well, let's jump in. I'm going to mute myself. Well, maybe do you, let's see if I can play some music. Let's see if I can make that happen. There's a new way to collaborate. And it's faster.
We're halfway through. It's 10 o'clock. Any questions, comments, challenges? I don't know about you. I'm doing my wheel of life. It looks pretty wobbly. <laughs> it's not very round, Jan. <laughs> All right. Keep plugging away, you guys. Good morning. Hey there. We're just all How's everyone. Out. How are you feeling? Good? Better? Oh, much better today. Thank you. Good, good. Much better. Good. Yeah. We're, just, we're just working on our business plans. All right. Just Exciting. chilling and working on plans. So, so and I emailed you those. So you've got them, right? Yes. Thank you so much. I love it. Awesome. All right. Cool. We'll keep on Stop. plugging. Uh, Barb, you can. Yeah, we'll take the last maybe 10 minutes and share if people want to share some stuff for sure. Great idea.
Okay, we'll give it another couple minutes and then we'll do a little bit of a share. Looks like we lost some people. All right, we got nine minutes left. Anybody want to share anything? I had started this last year and it was kind of fun to check off some of the things I wrote down that I wanted to do that I actually did. So it was kind of fun. So, but these questions are, they're hard, right? Hey, stop. Um, who got section one done of the uh, journal? Anybody got it all done? Sandra's got it done, just one. Jan, I'm definitely not done. <laughs> so this is going to take some time to actually like write down like what it is that uh, like dig, going deep, right? Doing the SMART, the SMART, SMART acronym, um, specific, measurable, obtainable, relevant, and time bound. So I'm, I'm looking at things I've written down. It's like, okay, well, they need a date, right? When are you going to actually do this by? So thoughts, comments, who wants to share something? I don't want to be the only one talking. I, I like that it's kind of holistic, um, you know, that it's not just about work. Um, we're going through this huge transition of going to an empty nest and just thinking through that and how it'll turn out and everything is good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, we get one dimensional in this business, right? Where it all just becomes about making money and getting trophies. And that's not what life's all about. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying the other stuff's not important to this, but when you're going through something else, you know, it, it is good to think it through as well as think through work. You know? Sure, sure. Yeah. Who else has something they want to share? Oh, it's going on with my, my um, well, go ahead. So, uh, something I wanted to do, or I've been wanting to do that I haven't really had for myself or for my my uh, clients is uh, I want to develop my own. Like in the next year, I think that's a a big goal of mine is to finalize my current marketing plan and also develop a uh, buyers and sellers step-by-step -step guide that I can give to them. That's that I can customize for them. Okay. Just create a layout for that and have that for them. This is the process. This is exactly what's going to be happening mm -hmm. for the most part and uh, make them feel safe with the process. Then okay. also with this market right now, how do you make them feel good about making a purchase right now and mm -hmm. trying to, uh, find a way to make them feel comfortable. I have a, a meeting coming up with somebody else, potential buyer. Uh, he's on the fence about wanting to rent or buy. And I'm going to work with him and try to develop something to make everybody feel comfortable in this situation. This is what you're going to be paying in rent. 
this is what you're going to be paying in your interest rates and and kind of like just breaking it down the middle and then uh coming up with possible refinance options sure. a a year out something like that yeah. So I would tell him that rent is 100% interest. Um, oh, I saw Nate's post the other day. Yeah. And then <laughs> if you go go to NAR, to the National Association of Realtors, um, this goes for all of you guys. They have lots of different um, studies and statistics about home ownership, and it just it outweighs what the payment is. So it talks about, you know, kids doing better in school, pride of place, you know, overall well-being, you know, all of that stuff. So there's a bunch of statistics that go outside of just the, the payment and the wealth building part of it. So I would lean on that too. So, and remember, I mean, once they get emotionally involved um, and keep keep them engaged, right? Because I mean, what if you could negotiate 10,000 or $15,000 to buy down the rate? Would that be something that would be a you know incentive to him? I've got one right now under contract that we did 2%, you know, $8,400 towards buyer's closing costs. So sellers are, are amicable, especially for managing the expectations going into the listing appointment and telling the sellers, hey, this is something that you should be prepared to have asked for, right? Um, so I think I would look crisp beyond just the money part of it and get him emotionally invested in why being a homeowner is good, regardless of the interest rates. This is going to be our new normal for probably the next two years, you guys. And Tina, you're in the mortgage side. So if you got anything to chime in, this is going to be at least my, everything I'm reading, at least two years, this is going to be our normal. So we have to, we have to adapt. So yeah, Sarah, it, it really is. And, um, you know, Chris, I have some information I can share with you privately or later, you know, I don't want to take up your time today, but we can, I can show you how the two, one buy down works. And it really is really powerful. I just sat through another webinar where our lender was um, promoting that. And so um, I can certainly give you a call later, Chris, if you want to utilize that to kind of convince your, your borrower, hey, this is a good time to buy. Thanks. And also, Chris, you have access to, um, I would look at Design Center and look at the stuff that's in there that's already done for you um, to help with those plans that you want to put together and also Workman product. Workman's got, you know, buyer consultations and listing listing plans and stuff too. So you guys have those tools available so you don't have to reinvent the wheel. All right, who else? We got four minutes. Who else has something they want to share? What's a, what's a BHAG that you want to do next year? Jennifer, how about you? Yeah, she's like, I knew you were gonna call on me. <laughs> I did. So it it might seem like you're not pushing yourself, but I just wanna try to match this year, right? So, but if we can do that in the next market, that actually, this new market, it is a challenge. So I didn't go nuts with like trying to increase volume or, or whatever. I literally want to try to maintain, but it's going to be twice the amount of work. So I still feel like it's, a, it's an actual goal. Why do you feel like it's going to be twice the amount of work? I mean, I don't know. I guess I'm you just came out of, you just came out of one of the most difficult markets to work a buyer ever in the history of history. And, it, and it's all I know. So if I'm not, uh, that that's a very good point. Okay. Cause if I'm not writing even though a lot of it was a waste of time like i wrote more offers in my first two years that brandy and nathan jr nate jr said he probably never wrote as many as i did so when i'm not that productive i'm failing this is if i'm not out in the car and i'm not spending 200 dollars a week in gas i'm not doing anything and i don't know how to function without it right so i freak out so to well, me <laughs> It's there's a better way to do it. So, you know, Ben on Randy's team, he used to be on Nate's team. He used to be, he used to say to his buyers, I'm going to take you out. I'm going to show you five or six of the best properties that are going to fit your criteria and you're going to buy one of them. And I'm not kidding you nine times out of 10. That's exactly what Ben did. He went out, showed him five or six houses, came back to the office, wrote a contract, done. So you don't need to be spending $200 a month in gas. If you go out <laughs> and you're effective or $200 a week in gas. So if you go out and you're effective, again, I've never, I, I, the buyers I worked last summer, one of them, I wrote seven offers. What? Seven offers to get one accepted. And the only reason it got accepted, we were a backup offer because the first one fell through. Well, otherwise we'd have been still schlepping around looking to buy at, at properties. So I would change your thinking. It doesn't have to be hard, right? It does not have to be hard. There are more options today for buyers than there has been in the last 24 months three years, maybe three years, right? So it doesn't have to be hard. So commit to showing them the five or six best homes that fit their criteria, give them permission to act, 
And now you just take that 150 bucks you saved in gas and go spoil yourself well, like, <laughs> or invest yeah, it in like, real like, estate. If I can get them in the car now, I mean, it's the same people. Like it, it's so much easier for you now and I can see the benefit. And some of them will have called and been like, I wish I would have listened to you three months ago. And so it does suck. You watch people just like think they're, that they have it figured out and kind of box their themselves out and you can't do anything about it. But it, it's, it's like getting those people in the, like on the, on the fence. Like just push them over. So anybody else, my seasoned people here, got any thoughts that they, we can, wise wisdom we can give Jennifer? Randy, Roberta specifically, <laughs> Deb. Well, this is Tina. I, I mean, Jennifer, the one advice I would give you is that, you know, I mean, personally, I know when I was buying a home, you know, I was competing myself, right? Buying, you know, looking at, writing tons of offers and it's painful. Well, now, like if I had to buy a house now, I would feel like I'm so powerful mm -hmm. because there's all these listings I get to pick from and yeah. I can negotiate. So instead of driving the price up, I get to drive the price down and I probably am going to get a seller concession. So, you know, it's like, we just have to kind of change their mindset as well of you're right, guys. I think what's freaking everybody out is the interest rates and I get it. I mean, it, when I got my license in 1989, rates were 10%. You just, you learn. But if I had come into a market where it was 3% to start, yeah, I might be freaking out a little bit too. But those of us that have been here a while, we go, yeah, you know, this is cyclical. We, we're going to see it happen. Um, but try to think about the positive things that are happening and, and that may help you as well. Yeah. Anybody else? We're, we're one minute over, but I just want to make sure we have time if anybody else wants to share something. So, all right, cool. So next Thursday, we are going to do the same thing. Just come and continue working on your stuff. Um, if you're doing the workman one, the SWAT exercise, uh, the, the way you're supposed to do that is fill one out for yourself and then have somebody else fill one out for you. It actually says three. Um, and I'd say somebody maybe in the industry that you trust and then someone outside of the industry that would give you good critique. We don't, you know, you don't want someone to say, well, you're a bad driver because that doesn't, that doesn't help you, right? <laughs> so yes. you want someone who is going to give you legitimate feedback to say, you know, these are the strengths and weaknesses and, and areas of improvement. And any of that stuff, when it's, when it's a weakness or a threat, those can be turned into opportunities. And so I'd love for you guys to maybe we talk about that next week um, if you guys are going to do the SWAT. So um, other than that, I think that's all I got for you guys. So um, I'll see you next Thursday. And yeah, so make sure if you're going to do the pumpkin carving contest that you guys get signed up. So we know who's participating, Monica. Uh, <laughs> so She's not allowed. She's, She's not allowed. Win. Yeah. So <laughs> if you have Monica on your team. You have the unfair advantage. So <laughs> no, we're that's why I have her. her. That's <laughs> why I have her. What'd you say, Jennifer? We're going to win this year. <laughs> All right. Awesome. All right. You guys go kick some butt. If you need anything, reach out. Otherwise I'll see you next Thursday. Okay. Thanks, Sarah. You're welcome. Bye-bye.